The headlines, the issues impacting you and your family. This week in Cincinnati on Nine on Your Side. Good morning and welcome to This Week in Cincinnati. I'm Craig McKee and happy Father's Day to all the dads out there that may be watching right now. Right now in Ohio, there is a new move to end the statute of limitations for rape. It's currently set at 20 years and that limit has been in place for several years. But it recently became an issue in the case of Ohio State University Dr. Richard Strauss. He killed himself back in 2005, but a report by the school says that he sexually abused hundreds of men at OSU. And those crimes started as early as 1979. And many people, including Governor Mike DeWine, are angry that if Strauss were still alive, he couldn't be prosecuted for many of the offenses because the statute of limitations would have expired. Joining us this morning to talk a little bit more about that plan to lift the statute of limitations is Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost, who has joined the call to end the statute of limitations for rape. Thank you so much for being here. And there really kind of seems to be a, a bipartisan support uh, on this particular movement. Uh, I, I guess what's the, what's the thought process behind this? Because when you're talking about statute of limitations being lifted, it's very much equal to murder in the sense of, of right. that. And if, you know, we don't have a statute of limitations for murder. Right. Um, you know, 40 years, 50 years, you can be an old man and you confess, you're gonna get a knock on your door uh, because we can still prosecute. Now, why is that? Um, it's because it's a heinous crime. It's serious enough to society that we don't wanna close the door on justice. Uh, we believe that rape ought to be in that category. Um, in some ways, it's many ways, it's just as bad as murder. It, it, it's a violent invasion of the spirit, soul, and body, and the trauma lasts for a lifetime. Uh, we think that uh, we should never close the courtroom door. Going with that comparison to say that if somebody's 80 years old and suddenly something pops up, they're guilty of murder because it's tied with DNA or what have you. Um, same thing goes with rape cases. If somebody's 75 years old and suddenly they pop up for a rape that happened 40 years prior, um, is there a limit to that or do you see no, it, is it open-ended? Um, and do the victims themselves have a choice to say, listen, it's been 40 years, I don't wanna go through this, let's not pursue any charges. Or will the state say, no, we're gonna go ahead and file charges? Well, technically the victim doesn't have a veto, but I can't imagine any prosecutor, and I was a prosecuting attorney for eight years and brought these kinds of cases. I can't imagine any prosecutor trying to make the case uh, against the, the victims, the survivors' wishes. How has technology played a role in, in perhaps coming to this decision to get rid of the statute of limitations? So look, uh, 40 years ago, even 30 years ago, we didn't have DNA, mm -hmm. so the first question you had to prove, and remember, everything's got to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. This isn't a congressional hearing, uh, which is like a knife fight, right? I mean, there are no rules mm -hmm. uh, in a congressional hearing. We have uh, rules of procedure, rules of evidence, it's proof beyond a reasonable doubt uh, to a jury. So the facts now are much easier to prove. We don't have to, for example, uh, have in contest whether the sex actually occurred. We've got DNA evidence now that can sure. establishment, uh, establishment, establish that. Um, and so I think that these cases have become more prosecutable and more certain in their verdicts than they were years ago. Has the state took a taken a look at the, the costs associated with this, the storage of evidence? Um, you know, for decades, you may have to hold on to this evidence. It's got to be held somewhere. Um, what in this proposal, as you're moving forward, is the state looking at? Well, look, the, we're already holding on to the evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, you might remember Mike uh, DeWine, when he came into office, had a backlog of over 13,000 rape kits around the state that had never been tested for DNA. You know, those were kits from the 70s and 80s uh, and have been hanging around all that long. So we already are keeping the evidence. Um, I don't think you can put ultimately a price on justice, but uh, this is not a, the kind of thing that's going to add a huge line item to the budget. Do you think counties uh, and cities should be forwarding their kits to the state? Should the state maintain and process all of, of the kits from across the, the state, that way there's consistency with how the evidence is handled uh, going forward? 
you know, if this law goes into effect? Well, look, we've got local labs that uh, larger jurisdictions maintain. Uh, you know, I have no interest in trying to uh, take control over these things. The BCI labs are available statewide to anybody without any cost, and we do the lion's share of the processing. Um, but I think the system is working just fine right now in terms of being able to keep a hold of the evidence to track it and to get it analyzed, whether that's happening at the local lab or whether it's coming to the state lab. Will there be any funding coming from the state level down to some of the smaller communities to be able to maintain this evidence and, and support this law? As I say, I've already, we're already seeing the agencies maintaining these. This isn't a new mandate. This is just a question of when are we going to lock the courthouse door? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we should let a rapist run out the clock on justice. But those kits will have to then be held for a longer period of time since there's no statute of limitations wherein, you know, where you sit now, okay, we're past, we're past that date. We can get rid of that evidence because it's no longer necessary to hold on to more storage space will be necessary for some of the smaller communities out there. So there is, a, there is an expense that will be tied to it. Not saying that's a large expense, but there yeah. will be an expense for some smaller communities. I, I suppose that's possible. I know that we've got rape kits out. We've got 33 CODIS hits right now on uh, the DNA database hits on old cases um, that predate the statute of limitations they're already being held on to. Okay. Women sometimes are reluctant, uh, and even men, reluctant to come forward as a rape victim. Uh, sure. Do you believe that going forward and, and adding a, a you know, statute of limitations and getting rid of that would, would change uh, that? Would it make more women or men reluctant to come forward knowing that you know, 40, 50 years down the road they may have to go through the whole process of reliving the, the crime and the drama and everything that goes, goes with that. I think it works the other way. I think that right now uh, there are rapes that go unreported because people are so traumatized in the event they can't talk to anybody about it, much less a stranger who has a badge and a gun. Um, for many of these folks, and I've sat with the rape victims, I've sat with people who have delayed for years reporting because of what it did to their soul mm -hmm. and the damage that it did to their mind and their confidence. Um, I, I think that this is actually going to help those folks believe that somebody will believe them. All right, our conversation will continue with Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost right after the break.